now in this geography lecture we are discussing about composition of atmosphere uh, here we have to keep in mind that composition of atmosphere is not uniform throughout the atmosphere you are aware of what is atmosphere that uh, gaseous jacket that is covering out our planet that we are calling as atmosphere we are quite lucky that we have this type of atmosphere uh, if you are talking of mercury the first planet supposed to be uh, why i am using word supposed to be because uh, till some scientists are considering that there are some planets between sun and mercury but we are not able to locate out them so anyway but if you observe mercury or even our satellite that is moon and then various other satellites also uh, then there is no outer jacket that is atmosphere is absent for them but in the case of earth there is atmosphere it is comparatively dense atmosphere it is not as dense as venus or even jupiter and saturn we have doubt that jupiter is having only atmosphere or it is having very dense atmosphere and some core inside but as jupiter is having very strong magnetic field it is considered that some solid core should be there at jupiter but if you are talking of earth then the atmosphere is not as dense as venus and not as light as mars so somewhere we are at mid but composition is really important uh, say up till first part uh, we are not discussed yet but that is called as troposphere part there is presence of water vapors that is uh, from 8 km around height that is at polar region and 16 km height at equatorial region let me clarify this is earth suppose this is north pole and this is south pole then the outer jacket of atmosphere is something like this so this is 16 km whereas this height is around 8 km so this is the first part of atmosphere which is comparatively dense part we are calling that as troposphere which is consisting of water vapors otherwise about 16 km uh, atmosphere extend till even more than 400 km height also but about 16 km there is absence of water vapors as we are moving in upper part of atmosphere the lighter gases are there at lower parts of atmosphere heavier gases are there so it is not uniform but suppose i am collecting out entire air and checking out then what is the composition first i have to remove water vapors because water vapors are not evenly distributed uh, in troposphere also near oceans it is having very high amount of water vapor and if you are moving inside the land then amount of water vapor in the uh, troposphere decreases so here i am removing out water vapors and then remaining amount we are discussing out that is the nitrogen 78.08% but this is given in terms of volume say not by weight so i am discussing here the composition of atmosphere in terms of volume so here nitrogen that constitutes 78.08% of volume of air oxygen is composing of 20.94% by volume so if i am writing here the nitrogen it is 78.08% whereas oxygen 20.94% just carry out total it's 12 10 9 9 so 99.02% by volume only two gases are there they are nitrogen and oxygen and therefore uh, they are called as permanent component of atmosphere so in case of permanent component they are 
nitrogen and oxygen because 78.08 percent is nitrogen and oxygen that is 20.94 percent just guess out what will be the third largest component here by volume that is even you can easily guess less than 1 percent all right and that is uh, if you are considering carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide then answer is no that third largest component is argon gas this is inert gas uh, it's 0.93 percent so it is argon gas which is 0.93 percent and then what we are continuously having fear that is about rising amount of carbon dioxide in the air so this is actually nitrogen oxygen these are compounded but they are having compounded as homogeneous only say for example nitrogen gas n2 oxygen o2 but here we are having, uh, having compound that is carbon dioxide this is having percentage 0.03 percent by volume we are fearing out about carbon dioxide level increase but that is practically speaking here by volume we are talking that is of 0.03 percent say large amount of carbon dioxide whatever is evolved that is absorbed by water body present on earth you are aware that there is reaction that is carbon dioxide that combines with water in order to get acid this is called as carbonic acid h2co3 and this way water is absorbed uh, sorry carbon dioxide is absorbed in water this way uh, whatever the excess of carbon dioxide what we are producing that carbon dioxide is absorbed by atmosphere uh, by water body by oceans by sea river whatever that this way carbon dioxide is converted into carbonate ions that is h2co3 and then this carbonate ions are utilized by various mollusca uh, you are aware of phylum mollusca uh, that means having soft body and usually they have shells usually uh, like you are aware of snail you are aware of pila you are aware of various uh, oysters they are having shells and shells are consisting of calcium carbonate then uh, carbon dioxide water is dissolved in water that is utilized by planktons that is uh, producers present in sea water they are utilizing out that and this way we are uh, digesting out or simply uh, maintaining out amount of carbon dioxide present in air then onwards there are inert gases like neon which is constituting 0.0018 percent so neon gas is 0.0018 percent then helium which is 0.0005 percent so they are at traces hmm. Whereas ozone, you can increase one more zero here, 0 0.0000 and 5, uh, sorry, 6 percent. And last, hydrogen, again 0 0.4 times 0 and 5 percent. Remaining gases, they are krypton, xenon and another important gas here because it is also considered as greenhouse gas, that is methane. Methane is present in traces only. Krypton and Xenon, they are also present in traces only. So this way, we have these gases in traces. So I have to revise again that uh, nitrogen and oxygen, they are present at considerable large amount. That is why we are calling them as permanent components of atmosphere. Other components, they are argon, carbon dioxide, then neon, helium, ozone and hydrogen. Whereas krypton, xenon and methane, they are at traces. Now I have used the word that is greenhouse gases. What is the meaning of greenhouse gas? 
first thing we have to consider that what is greenhouse effect say for farming or for advanced level of agricultural purpose a house made up of glass sheets is used or even if you observe in our car suppose you are parking out car in direct sunlight all glasses that uh, windshields they are closed then light uh, sunlight or whatever that visible light that enters through glass we are calling that a short radiation that is absorbed by internal body of car and then it is radiating out heat that is infrared radiation we are calling them as long radiations long radiations are not able to pass through glass easily and therefore they get trapped inside and therefore temperature rises so if you are parking out car uh, in sunlight and then suddenly opening out door and moving inside you will feel very hot if you are observing greenhouse we will get same type of effect and that's why we are calling that as greenhouse effect if you observe mercury the first planet supposed to be very very hot but the other side of mercury that means which is not facing towards sun that is having temperature even less than 200 degree celsius uh, minus 200 degree celsius why this happens because mercury is not having jacket of gases and therefore the side that faces towards sun is extremely hot but side which is opposing in opposite direction of sun that is extremely cold this is called as temperature range in case of earth as rotational speed of earth is very high as compared to mercury but uh, other side is not going in negative temperature i can compare moon's temperature the moon's uh day time part is having temperature greater than 100 degree but moon's night time part is having in negative temperature why this is happening because moon is having very rare atmosphere whereas in case of earth it is not thing that day time we are having temperature that is very 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 high and night time very very low our daily temperature range daily temperature range means maximum temperature minus minimum temperature recorded in that day that is very very less say for example i am staying in mumbai in our mumbai maximum temperature may be around 35 to 37 degree celsius whereas minimum temperature is around 25 degree celsius so what is my daily temperature range that is 10 to 12 degree celsius suppose we are going to extreme conditions uh, that is inside the continent then may be possible daily uh, high temperature may be in the range of 40 degree celsius whereas low temperature on the same day or night rather that should be around minus <coughs> uh, 5 degree to minus 7 degree celsius so what is temperature range there 45 to 47 degree celsius so this way we can calculate temperature range that is difference between maximum temperature and minimum temperature in the same day suppose i am calculating for entire year then i have to check out what is the maximum temperature recorded in year and what is minimum temperature recorded in year so like that i can calculate temperature ranges you will get that our temperature ranges are not that high this is because the effect that is called as greenhouse effect our atmospheric jacket that is obviously uh trapping out heat and therefore night time temperature is not going usually to great extent to low level now for that purpose the gases they are responsible mainly water vapors we can't eliminate from lower atmosphere second that is carbon dioxide we can't eliminate that it is necessary and third that is methane that is marsh gas particularly from marshy places these gases are evolved so these three gases we are considering here as greenhouse gases why because these gases are responsible for making green greenhouse effect now keep in mind greenhouse effect is essential 
it is not the thing that greenhouse effect should not be there it is essential that's why we have uniform temperature on earth but rise in greenhouse effect is not essential what that uh, that environmental scientists they are saying that uh, daily uh, or yearly the average temperature of earth is increasing out over previous several years data we are getting that there is consistent rise in the temperature and resulting glaciers particularly in the frigid zone the glaciers are melting out ice caps are decreasing on earth even if you observe himalay then gangotri glacier the original glacier that is giving rise to uh, birth for ganga that glacier that is also decreasing in size like that references are there this is all because of we are calling that as global warming no doubt but for that purpose responsible gas is carbon dioxide mainly because methane that is emitted by natural sources only uh, that is uh, usually micro bacteria uh, sorry micro organisms they are emitting out this in fermentation process particularly in marshy places methane is generated then by decay of feces of different animals methane is generated that's why if you observe the major constituent of gobar gas that is also methane gas that is uh, generated by micro organisms so that is there water vapors we can't eliminate out as long as oceans are there so what is remaining that is carbon dioxide and worldwide the fossil fuel increased to greater extent use of fossil fuel and that is rising out temperature uh, because amount of carbon dioxide increased more that is the uh, thing so we discuss here composition of atmosphere in very short period thanks